Welcome to episode 59 of In Touch with the BioS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and Apple TV and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my guest this week is Chuck Joyner from the Mac Voices podcast. Thanks for coming back, Chuck. How are you tonight? I'm great, David. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. We, we have a, we're having a blast here. I can't believe it. I'm 59 episodes already. I just thought about that. <laughs> we, I've been, Congratulations. Uh, cranking along here. Yeah. So uh, this is a, this is another another uh, episode here. We're going to talk a little bit about the news. There's some, we been quite a bit of news this past week, so we'll have some good discussion about that. Um, and I continue and, and I decided to continue on this series, and we're, we're wrapping up the third in the series here. We, we started with the iPhone, and now uh, we're going to go. Uh, we did the iPad, or which ones you should buy. Well, we got the Apple Watch to tackle this 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 time around, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that and a couple of tips and see where we're at as far as uh, as far as all that goes. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. All right, let's uh, let's kick right in here. And the first thing I want to ask you is, uh, you know, you uh, are so great at going to CES, and then of course the NAB show, which is the National Association of Broadcasters. And I wanted to just kind of ask you uh, briefly what um, what anything that was uh, that stood out and relates to uh, iPhone or iPad or or any of the iOS devices uh, at the show this year. Yeah, uh, David, it's it's really interesting what's happening. Um, mm-hmm. the The iPhone and iPad are more and more, so much more, I love it. becoming involved in prof- in professional video, and I mean professional video. Right. Um, I would love to give you a, a complete rundown of everybody I talked to that had oh, I can an, imagine. <laughs> an iOS thing, but you know, I'd lo- the the Luma Touch uh, editor. Mm-hmm. Or, excuse me, the Luma, yeah, Luma Touch. I have that right. Um, Filmic Pro, of course, uh, the, the the recording app. Yeah. Um, at the at the Faster Together event, I talked to some folks, the folks from Apogee, and they were showing uh, several different pieces of hardware and a couple pieces of software yeah. that are you know to to give you professional audio mm-hmm. and some sophisticated audio tools um, on on iOS. So it it's just sort of everywhere and. Yeah. It's it's freeing up video production, high quality video production, and of course, okay, so yeah, we don't have the lenses, but you've got 4K cameras. Oh, and I know, my gosh, what's wrong with me? I, f- I forgot. Um, Switcher Studio and um, and Cinemaker, you yeah. know, both are live production tools that utilize an iPad and iPhone cameras to wow. do multi camera shoots. Um, it's just it's so much. So as as big as NAB is, and of course as focused as it is on broadcasting, right? This stuff is making its way in, and it's and, and so many sophisticated features are coming down into the devices that you and I carry around every day. Yeah, and I figure as much, and and it's uh, it just it's 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 exciting to hear, just because. Uh, the, the iPhone has just an incredible camera. It really does. And uh, I would, and you hear all these filmmakers to start talking about that. They use this camera for, uh, for their production to, to actually film movies, film shows. Uh, I'm sure you talked to a few people that, that do that. I bet. Huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I had quite, quite a discussion with, um, with the filmic people talking about, you know, yeah. some of the people that they, they have using their app to shoot, you know, Hollywood style movies. I don't even know what that means anymore, but you know, it's, but they are. <laughs> it's yeah, just, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's just to that point. I mean, you talked. We just talked about. I, I have. I just got a new camera that we're, obviously you won't see it because we're not doing a video. But uh, this is a uh, this is an HD camera, and you know the next. This was the this is the Logitech uh, C nine thirty E camera, uh, but it's it's still only HD. I mean, you go to the next level up on Logitech, you're spending two hundred dollars for a webcam that's four K and four K video. It is crazy. I mean, I mean, and I, I mean, I know we're there with 4K, but because uh, uh, because uh, the iPhone takes 4K videos, um, but uh, it's still, uh, you know, gosh, so, um, if you're unless you're doing some pretty insane video production, 4K is a lot. Well, it, it is, and you know, to be fair, the the services that you and I use to record our shows and watch each other while we're recording this show. Right. Um, you know, they don't support 4K. So you've got right. this beautiful 4K camera that is being squeezed down to 720. Exactly. And, and so, you know, you can really tell a difference if, if I take like, if I, I take my uh, my iPad to the show and yeah. shoot everything in 4K. And so it's it's much clearer than you and I can deliver here. True. But think what it was four or five years ago when we yeah. were delivering standard definitions. So it it just, it, if it's not here yet, just give it yeah. about 
a year and it'll be here. Oh yeah. It's, 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 it's going to be here. So let's, uh, so uh, anything else you thought you could think of that uh, really stood out? I think we uh, pretty much covered what, uh, what NAB had yeah. and relates to iPhone or iPad. Yeah. You know, I would tell anybody though, if you are interested in video production, whether you're using an iPhone or a red camera, it is a great event to go to. Yeah. Um, not just the toy store aspect of it, because it is a big right. toy store, and I suggest you leave your credit card at home. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> the, the training that you can get and the opportunity to interact with so many people that are actually out there doing this stuff is just yeah. phenomenal. So if if you have an interest in it, and it's 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 Vegas, so how can yeah. you go wrong? Can't go wrong with Vegas. <laughs> Who knows? This this might be since I couldn't make CES. This could be the show I might might try to make uh, next year because i know i don't think i'll have too much of a problem getting a, a getting a pass at the nab's show yeah, so. yeah. but but again you know leave your credit card at home i will leave my credit card at home because <laughs> i will be already more broke than i already am so uh speaking of new technologies let's uh, jump into some of the news that, that caught my eye uh there was an article in the verge uh, that actually was today as we record this at and CEO says 5G phone plans might be tiered and priced based on data speeds. Boy, are we back to that again? Um, that was the that was uh, the way it was many years ago until we uh, until we got the unlimited uh, uh, services that were available. So if, if you look, go through the article, he's actually talking about you know their actual 5G network, which is not the uh, not the carriers misleading 5GE nonsense, as the article says. Uh, it's it's currently live in 19 markets, uh, some of the bigger markets, and it should be making its way onto other phones uh, like the Samsung's uh, S10 uh, Galaxy. And uh, there's been, been periods of time where it's been on AT&T and then it moves to Verizon. And I'd be interested to see where this goes, uh, especially with, with, with carriers like T-Mobile who have unlimited everything plans. Uh, what, what, what do you think of 5G and think where we're at on this? I, I don't know. I mean, unfortunately, the the, major, the the big phone companies have a bit of a history of yep. trying to charge for things that based on perception. And, you know, now this one's not going to be quite perception, but I have I do have to wonder what their competitors will do. Um, yep. Because if they all start trying to do this, well, then are we into a collusion situation? Right. And that is pure speculation on my part, folks. So that's not an accusation. <laughs> by, it's just, you know, what, what you would almost have to conclude. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, this is one of those things. Whenever anybody says might or could or yes. maybe, I, I, I try to skip over those. Yeah, because, right. you know, when it happens, then we'll deal with it. Although they did quote the CEO of AT&T, but, you know, I've – I got some bitterness to AT&T lately. I've been not happy. I watched why I walked away and went to T-Mobile. So, um, but uh, it should be interesting to see how these five, how this five G uh, uh, pans out. I mean, still waiting to see potentially with the the Sprint and T-Mobile merger. Uh, I know that's going through some some rocky hurdles. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, but uh, yeah, five G is going to be here before you know it, and, and then more speeds to deal with. But um, you know, I think our phones are pretty gosh darn fa- fast right now as they are. So, but it just keeps evolving. Man, um, you always want more speed, David. Come on. Oh, I, and I do. I, do. That's, why I, that's why I have gigabit Ethernet that we're talking on right now here at home. So, <laughs> so I got to mm-hmm. have it. So, um, and uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we're gonna we're gonna talk about which Apple Watch you should buy. But how ironic! I just realized that today, as we were recording this today, happy birthday to the Apple Watch. It was four years ago today, as we record this on April twenty fourth, that the original Apple Watch launched in nine countries around the world. Uh, around the world, and and now four years later, we are in the fourth iteration of it already. So they've come out with four models of this of this watch uh, since then, and it's just it's just incredible. I mean, it, it, and the device is just continued to evolve. The Series Four is just an amazing device. Um, include if you if I remember correctly, the the, the the Series Zero, which was the first model, had the gold seventeen thousand dollar watch. That thing was pretty short lived. What do you think? I mean, it's I love the watch. I, I know you do too. I, I think I think you've you've hit the right word. It's it's an evolution, um, yeah. not just of the of the device itself, but also of the perception of the device yeah. and and what it represents. I mean, you and I bought it because it was a piece of tech that we were really interested in. Right. Um, Angela Arendt would have us believe that, you know, they were trying to sell it on the basis of being a piece of jewelry. Right. And we all, as tech people, kind of laughed at that and said, you know, come <laughs> on. I mean, it's there's going to be a new model next year. There right. was. Um, I don't know what happened to those gold watches. I don't know how many of them they sold. I can't believe they sold no. many. I think a lot, then, of the, a lot of the celebrities and 
obviously the very wealthy had said, ah, look, I'm, I'm a, the status symbol. I have an Apple watch that's gold. And now look what, yeah. now, now, who, who, who's laughing now because that, that phone, that watch is now obsolete. So, <laughs> Right. Well, and then there was this, the ceramic case, right. if you remember. And, they and took so, that too. you know, that, that, that kind of fell apart again because of the extra high price. I mean, and it's for a watch. It's, it's a pretty, it's, it's for the, oh boy. <laughs> there are expensive watches. Okay. And oh, of course I've, I've never been an expensive watch guy, yeah. um, but for for this, you know, yeah, this is a little bit high for the for the average person, but maybe not for the tech people. Um, but it it just has continued to evolve, and its functionality has continued. To it really evolve. has, yeah, and it it'll continue to evolve. And in, in the article this we're linking in Mac Rumors, um, of course, they're probably already talking about the Series Five model that'll be coming out uh, in, in probably around September of this year. That's that's the rumor anyway. Um, but from what they're saying in the, the Series 5, it's possibly it could be a uh, just a minor update. That, that uh, I mean, the, from the four, 3 to the 4 was pretty big, especially with the ECG. We'll talk about stuff in a bit here. But, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's uh, four years. Time is just flying by here. And, we're, and our devices continue to evolve, and, and they really, get, uh, really are get to be exciting, I'd say. Yeah, I, I, when you told me that, I was kind of shocked. It's like four years already. Yeah, I mean, it I know. makes sense. Yes, this is the Series Four watch, but I just can't. I, 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 I've been carrying this on my arm for four I, years. I think the the first year of Mac stock. We'll talk about that later. Uh, that I had the watch right away, and we started talking about it right then and there too. So that was four years. Well, we have five years yeah. ago now. So yeah. Uh, and then another story that caught my eye from. Um, uh, about the Apple Watch. This actually, I linked this to the um, the, the guys at Mac Stories, uh, Federico and uh, Vitici. Um, Apple. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this was the wrong article. If I would click the right one here, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll go back to that. I think I uh, here we go. This was on Apple Insider. I'll go. We'll come back to the other article. Uh, a surfer retrieves his working Apple Watch six months after losing it in the ocean. I'm like, really? So. Uh, Basically, the article says a man from Huntington Beach, California, has recovered his Apple Watch that he had lost surfing on the Pacific Ocean six months ago, and it still works. I can't believe that for one bit, uh, but it's true. Uh, he says this. He, he, the, the, the guy says that the the thing has been a, my good luck charm. I would use it quite often to show the surf and how much uh, how fast he was going, even where he was on the beach. So so he uh, he, uh, he 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 had the watch and, and lost it and was, was, was bummed. And I would probably would have been bummed and just kind of written it off and bought, went and bought another one. But uh, sure enough, uh, he, uh, he found it. And isn't that remarkable? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that talk about a needle in a haystack, you know, and the fact that it's still working too. I mean, that's, yeah. And this was in Huntington beach, California. So, you know, that's not exactly a small area. Uh, not that the ocean itself is vast. Who knows where it would float away to. Um, and then, uh, they talked about lost mode because he, he put the watch in lost mode when it, and when he locks the Apple device. And, of course, it would let someone assign a phone number to his watch on the screen and message anyone who finds it. I can't believe the, the battery still lasted all that time, all the salt water from the ocean. And But you got to remember that that, they, that Apple does say that this is water, a water-resistant uh, watch. And you can go, I think, was it uh, nine meters? I think you can go in, in, in water uh, while you're swimming, I believe it is. Yeah, I think that's, that sounds right. So... <laughs> And it gives a new meaning to low power mode. <laughs> it, it, does. it does. So that was, a, I thought that was a, uh, quite interesting. So now let's go to the article that I was supposed to click here. This is on Mac stories, not that uh, from Frederico and, and, and crew. Uh, Apple launches a dedicated YouTube channel for Apple TV. I talked about the uh, YouTube channel for Apple support uh, uh, on YouTube. And it's interesting to see that Apple is really, has really um, embraced YouTube because they're doing a lot of things and being able to talk about the things that are uh, uh, out there about Apple and, and realizing how big YouTube really is. And, and as well as we both know, we both publish our podcasts on YouTube and, and it gets, it really has a lot of, a lot of eyes out there. So uh, over the last few weeks, uh, Apple just quietly debuted a new YouTube channel that's dedicated to one of its services, the Apple TV. Uh, so of course, Apple announced last month uh, that they're going to have the Apple TV Plus services with uh, the, the, the shows and the behind-the-scenes clips and all that stuff and the carpool karaoke and all the stuff they have, their content. So 
obviously what it's going to be is it's going to be a, a, a video of uh, different channels uh, of the different things that they're going to be, uh, they're going to be uh, showing. One of the interesting ones it mentions is uh, you know, watching trailers like the upcoming films like Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Did you see that trailer? I did. Oh my God, that, that I'm too excited. That that uh, I can't wait. I can't wait for that to come out. And it's Christmas time. So, uh, but what do you think of this? I mean, I, what do you think Apple just using YouTube as a tool like this? I, I think it's. I mean, I think it's perfect. I think that yeah. uh, for the very same reasons that you and I publish on there is that's yeah. where the traffic is. It is, and, and so if people want information on Apple or or Apple products, and they can add something of value there, which Apple has a tendency to do that, no matter where they go, if if they're going to take over something. Not take over, sorry, but um, if yeah. they're going to contribute to something like a YouTube, they're going to use it to best advantage. And we're we kind of go back to the very first part of the discussion, right? With, with the iOS devices becoming more and more uh, important in the video realm, why wouldn't you play on the big, right. biggest video channel out there? Might as well, might as well. Yeah. And uh, I think support is smart, and and they and they publish all of their uh, advertising, their videos, because everybody loves the Apple ads that that are, that are released, so they get to watch those too. So why not? They might as well advertise, advertise, and talk about the upcoming TV Plus service that's coming out. And well, shows are going to be interesting. You know, what did, what did you think? I mean, the three announcements we hadn't talked about it. Uh, the the uh, the TV Plus app and the TV Plus content. You know, it seems interesting. I don't know. Well, I, I, so much of it to me, I, I think they have the chance to tell to, to tell some great stories. I think the question is going to be, are they the kind of stories that the public wants to see? Um, Apple is trying to, it's seemingly, we don't know because the shows aren't out yet, but right. it seems like they're going to try to go something a bit more family friendly. Yeah, and, like and, that, and that's great, you know, yeah. but it feels like in the world we live in today and the, the kind of entertainment people like to consume that that is going to limit them a little bit. Right. And so if they, but if the, if the stories are high, high enough quality, then well, you, you may pull in even, even someone who likes explosions and things, uh, you yeah. know, cars wrecking and all, you know, you may be able to get something. And if you have comedy that is sophisticated enough, you know, maybe you'll pull in that audience. So, yeah. I think we just have to wait and see how yeah. it all plays out. Just, just like it is rumors that, 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 but at least we know it's fact because Apple does have some content out there already. So check it out. We have a link in the show notes. Uh, which uh, article uh, about that. Um, a couple IS, iOS 13 articles that kind of come eye. that of course already, I can't believe we're talking about iOS 13 coming here. We're on iOS 12 and it's every year. It's the next version of, of the iteration of the, of iOS here. Uh, first one was uh, uh, iOS 13. This is in The Verge. Uh, iOS 13 will let apps like Lightroom access photos directly from external storage report claims. And it says the iPad Pro will be, get a bit more professional. So apparently they're talking about Apple and iOS 13 will let third-party apps import these f- photos directly from an external storage device. And uh, I believe apps never were able to do that before. It's always going to be through the Files app or, or it would sync somewhere. Um, but uh, – and, and – uh, and Apple had previously released a series shortcut to automate the process, but they're saying a new feature could make it unnecessary with the USB-C tablet aimed at professionals. So there's there's a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, interesting discussion about this. What do you think uh, how this is going to work out for, for the photographers? Well, okay. So first of all, let's let's make clear that this is not an official it's official a rumor. Release. It's no, rumor. It, it's yes. another one of those. That said, mm-hmm. it's something that makes sense. Yeah, it does um, because of the the size of some of the photos that these folks are and, and what they're shooting them with, and the fact that the iPads went to to USB C, right. which makes them a lot easier to connect to mass storage devices. Correct. So it would be sort of a surprise to me if they couldn't or didn't do something like this yeah. by hook or by crook to right. you know to let folks access, especially things like photos on external external yeah. storage devices. Absolutely. Again, it's rumor. I, I it caught my eye. Talk talk back with us in June when we're covering worldwide the WWDC uh, conference when they actually announce it and they finally give us some ideas of what's going to be happening. Because I know last year it was last year around this time they announced that that uh, Photoshop and, and it was going to have more native adjustments and in, in settings. Uh, I know that was going to get released and the Pro was going to be able to adapt to that too. So. Uh, 
yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see uh, where things go. But caught my eye. I thought it'd be interesting. Uh, it'd be interesting discussion. Um, one other uh, quick one I would talk about with iOS 13. There was a um, that we had to ask you to have a discussion this on the podcast. I was just on Mac to the Future Go, uh, but iOS 13 could allow uh, iPads to actually turn into real laptop replacements because they could potentially allow a mouse. Um, and again, this is rumor. This was in laptop, uh, laptopmag.com. Um, what would they do to allow a mouse to work? I mean, will there be a cursor? That's going to be interesting, interesting thoughts. We, we had interesting discussion about it. I, I, but I think again, it's, it's, it's still pure rumor. I, you know, this again is one of those things. Now it's, it's fascinating. We've seen people right. try to take their iPads and turn them into desktop replacements. Right. Now they want to take the iPad and <laughs> put a mouse on it. And it's like, guys, could you just please accept it for accept the device for what it is? Right. And if it does if it doesn't suit you, then take take, you know, take a laptop. Yeah. But you know, I I I I really don't get this because there is no cursor uh, in in mm-hmm. iOS. Yep. So you know, are you are you going to have to run a, some kind of software layer on top of it, on top of everything? Or so is iOS thirteen going to do it? Yeah, that's the question well. too. And you know, and if and if if they go that direction, okay, I, I will be very interested to see how and why they implement that. Yeah. I just am having a hard time buying this one. Yeah, I agree. I think there's much else we could talk about with relate, relates to that. So two more stories. Um, just a public service announcement here. Did uh, did you sign up for the news app uh, for the trial? I did. Okay. So starting tomorrow, if you don't if you don't want to uh, keep it uh, keep subscribing to it, uh, you have to cancel, or there, or or Apple is going to tr- be charging you the nine ninety nine. I think I'm going to stick with it. I'm I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not uh, I'm looking to go away from it anytime soon. Um, what were your thoughts on it? Do you think uh, was it was it worth it? To, uh, so far, I know it's got some growing pains. Yeah, but I have to tell you, David, I was kind of surprised because I've gotten away from being a news junkie just yeah. because of all the noise that's out there. And True. I really have been enjoying Apple News and the way okay. it's curated, oh, the way it's presented. Um, I, I, so I canceled my subscription, which sounds contrary to what I was just saying. Sure. But now I'm anxious to see if I will miss it because okay. I have it's become part of my daily routine okay. in reviewing it. And so now I want to see just... Was it because it was there or is it really something that I found useful? Um, So I'm going to go back to my RSS feeds and see if they satisfy me. And if not, well, you can always go back. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, I uh, gave a tip uh, last, uh, I believe it was that last episode um, on the way to get around the fact that some, some content that the wall street journal doesn't, uh, doesn't show in the feed. Uh, you know, because a lot of times, you know, you go to their website because they still want you to pay for their subscription. There's no doubt, no, no doubt about it, but they are allowing some of the content on there. But what you can do is you can open up the Wall Street Journal on, on their website. And if it's asking for a password, asking to go to, through the paywall, you just uh, click the, the, the up arrow uh, going to the style sheet. And then you say open in news. And then once you open that article in news, it, you can read it. So... They, 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 we found a little bit of a workaround uh, to being able to read the read the Wall Street Journal beyond what the content they already they uh, show. So, uh, but uh, that's uh, that said, if you don't want to keep it, today is the twenty fourth. As we record this, tomorrow is the twenty fifth. You'll be charged nine ninety nine, and uh, and and so be it, right? <laughs> and you know, and again, uh, I mean, it's it's one of those things. You think about what we all used to spend for magazines and newspapers. Yep. Right. And I'm not suggesting that, you know, you don't continue to save the money and read things online. But on the other hand, you know, Apple does seem to be trying to add value and succeeding at some level. Right. Uh, it just depends on whether that is something that you do value. Absolutely. All right. Last story, I promise. And uh, this was an interesting story because uh, Google, Google has a the Google Fit app and they only had it on Android. Well, they just released it today as we record this. It's launched on the iPhone with Apple Health and Apple Watch integration, which is interesting. Um, so the fitness tracking app can be uh, can be used to track workout sessions completed with both an Apple Watch or a Wear OS uh, smartwatch, which is their 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 version of the smartwatch. And also integrates movement uh, movement data from apps connected from Apple Health, such as Sleep Cycle, Nike Run, and Headspace. So they really have come a long way, and they've integrated this with uh, with iOS, which is which is pretty in- interesting. Uh, what did you think on this? There's, it, I mean, Fitbit is still go, still out there and still going strong, but yeah. 
Apple Watch is, I, I venture to say, and I have nothing official to back this up, but no, it's, it's second, if not if not number one, depending yeah. on how, how you slice the statistics. So yeah. it just would make sense that they're going to put it on there. Yeah. But I have to point out that now you're putting Google on your wrist. Yes, you are. And is this that, a good thing? And their privacy, their privacy settings. So you have to think about that too. Uh, so proceed with caution. It is a free download. What a surprise. And, uh, uh, but check that out. Cause you know, you, you want to make sure take a look at their, uh, their privacy settings on this because you don't know it could be, it could not be as uh, private as you really think it is. If you don't want people to be looking at your health uh, information. Uh, well, not just that David, but, um, and I have not looked at it. I want to be fair about that, yeah, sure. but you know, you're putting something on your, on your body that goes with you everywhere. Right. And so are they tracking you wherever you go? Hard to say. So I just, you know, something to think about folks, something to think about. Absolutely. So that's, that's some of the news that caught my eye and caught our eyes. I wanted to talk about a little bit. So let's go dig right into the topic of, of the, of the show this week. Um, I wanted to talk about buying an Apple Watch. What would you do? What would you choose? And, uh, and how? what is the right Apple Watch for your needs? So what I wanted to really do is I wanted to just kind of dig in and, and talk about what, what watches are out there. You have the Series 4 like I do. Is that uh, correct, Chuck? I do. Okay. I do. And, and then you had, uh, did you have, uh, what, what ones did you have prior to that? I'm, I, I shame to admit, I pretty much have had every model, so... <laughs> Don't be ashamed because I did too. <laughs> okay, so, you, so you went zero, one, two, three, and then three, four. four. Okay. Yeah. So, so that means you're, you're hearing it for, first from us that we both have expertise in this, uh, in, in this, as far as uh, what watch we liked, what watch we didn't like and uh, what, uh, what to buy now. So what the current models that are out there now is you have the Apple watch series four and you have the Apple watch series three. Now the series three, actually I just saw today, uh, I believe Best Buy was selling it for one ninety nine. That's like the cheapest I've ever seen an Apple Watch, and especially one that's a current model because they're still they're still making it. So, um, but to break down the models that are out there as far as um, as far as the Apple Watch Series Four goes, you basically have a four or five different models that are across the line. Um, you have the Series Four, which is the standard, uh, which is the standard one which I purchased, and that's got the GPS or the GPS and cellular, and that's 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 consistent with a lot of these models. Um, and then you have the Apple Watch Nike Plus, which has the Nike Plus workout edition with all the workout uh, uh, stuff that's included uh, beyond what it already gives you. Um, and then, uh, again, like I said, you have both the GPS version and then you have the GPS or, or, and cellular. Um, and then, of course, if you want to spend a little extra money, you can get the Apple Watch, the Hermes edition, which is, of course, that beautiful band that costs a ridiculous amount of money. And I don't feel any need to, to, to purchase uh, that wouldn't you would you agree <laughs> uh well yeah i for me i mean yeah. there are people that, again we're back to what people value some people I, value that kind of thing i'll I'll, I'll I'll mention one of our friends barry folk uh, yeah barry <laughs> there's uh, a surprise <laughs> he, he has a hermes band i know that I, at least i didn't see it i'm wearing it the last time i i saw him because of course he has to have bands that are two different colors and uh that's stylish now, right? And of course, it requires you to buy two bands in order to do that. But uh, uh, but that's what's great about the Apple Watch. You can really customize it the way you want. Um, so uh, with the Series 4, they, they, they made it a much larger display from the Series 3. Um, and of course, it's got the haptic feedback with the digital crown. Uh, and it's got the uh, uh, S4 system in package. So it gives you some uh, really good accurate uh, speed. The speaker. Did you think the speaker was much louder uh, than uh, than the previous model? Definitely, M most most definitely. It was one of the biggest surprises for me of that watch. Yeah, so uh, I, I was very happy with that. Um, they uh, also included, of course, the the ECG app and the electric heart sensor. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, it uh, and then that's open in the United States. I'm not sure other countries. As anybody who listens outside the United States, uh, if that's uh, applicable as of yet, but measures your heart rate and tells you if you have AFib or not. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and that with that optical heart sensor, is, those are all standard across all the models in the, Apple, in the Series 4. As I said, you have two models that are cellular, and uh, I've, I've given my opinion about cellular before. I, I don't find cellular to be of any value. You're spending another $150 for this watch, and, and do I really want to have my cellular have my cellular service separate on my watch and have to pay another $10 or $15 a month for it? My opinion, no. I always have my phone with me. Do you have the cellular? 
No, I, I don't. And I agree. I agree with everything you said, except that I can understand there could be some circumstances, some situations yeah. for, for folks who might have a little trouble getting around or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, or that have health issues that they sure. they can't afford not to have access to a phone. And in that case, then absolutely cheap insurance against yeah. something bad happening. But uh, for, for most folks, I'm like you. I've got my phone with right. me or very close by at, at all times. So no, absolutely didn't do that. So, um, and then if you keep going down the line here. The GPS and alter- altimeter is, is, uh, is standard on across all the models. Um, it is swim proof. I believe it was, you can go down to nine meters. I, I still am nervous using my Apple watch in the water. Honestly, <laughs> I know you can, but I don't know if you, if you I don't know if you swim or not, but have you, I don't know if you've ever put it in the water or not. I'm, I'm a little nervous. You know, no, I've not. I mean, I know that they made a big deal out of the fact you can shower with it. I'm, you're certainly not down at nine meters in yeah. the shower, but right, right. it's still, I guess it's the, the ingrained training we've had with electronics since we were kids that, you know, electronics and water don't mix. And so, yeah, exactly. Um, another note of the cellular version that they do spot out, Apple does spout out the fact that uh, you can stream Apple Music and Apple Podcasts and not have to have your have to have your phone with you. Uh, me, my iPhone is my leash. I, I don't think there's any rare time I ever have my I not have my iPhone with me. So that's why, to me, it's not of any value uh, to have this version. But uh, like you said, some there are some people who may not want to bring their own phone with them, and then they can they can be independent and. Uh, just have the Apple watch and be able to listen to music and use their AirPods and, and uh, use it as an independent device. I, and again, I, th- I think it's, it's whatever fits you. I mean, you have to figure out. Right. And, and if, if you're just buying the, an Apple watch for the first time, then it's maybe a little bit difficult, but up to this point, you probably have a pretty good idea of the things you like to do with your watch or can do with your watch. Right. And so buy what fits you. And you know, it's cause it's not, the financial difference, except for that monthly cellular bill, is not that much if it's sure. something you really use. True. So uh, and then if you go down the line and look at the Series 3 watches, it might be more affordable. I mean, like I said, you just hit the nail on the head about pricing. You know, uh, base price now on, on Apple Watch is anywhere between $199 and $229, whereas an app, a Series 4 starts right around $399 and up and can be very expensive. So you may not have the budget for it, and you may be just t- perfectly satisfied as far as um, the uh, the Apple Watch Series Three. Series Three has an S3 dual core processor, so it is a little slower uh, processor, which you probably won't know, notice much. It still has the optical heart sensor, so it does do some uh, uh, it does some heart rate measurements and things like that, but not anywhere near what the what the like, the ECG does. Um, you, you have the cellular option as well as the GPS option. Um, they're also swim proof, so that that hasn't changed as well. Um, and then uh, these the, the two models that are, are in Series Three are this are aluminum case with the sports band, or aluminum case with the Nike uh, sports band. Um, so they limit it down to different models as far as what those go. So, but you know what, the Series Three model was 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 pretty good, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, they're they're all fine models. It just again, some have more features and and. The only thing, I guess, my my theory on a lot of, of these kind of electronics, I mean, there's a breaking point, obviously, but um, I think the higher on the chain you can buy, the longer you have the chance, the opportunity to be satisfied with it when the next one comes out, because there's a next one coming. We both know it. We just right. don't know what the feature set will be. Correct. And if you decide that, boy, I really want that new one because of that feature set, your resale value is going to be higher. So this is true. Yeah. And I've sold off all my watches. I think my, when I traded in the series three to Apple, actually they gave me $279 for it and I traded it into Apple directly. So that was a good price uh, when the series four came out. So um, I was pretty happy with that. So yeah, easy to do. So, um, but the biggest thing with the Apple watch and a lot of people like to use it for is workouts and being able to stay fit, watching your steps. Um, does, do you, do you measure your steps and do you measure those, those kind of things while you're using the watch at all or? I mean, I, it, it, yes, it's tracking it for me. You know, I, I go through periods where I'm, I'm religious about looking at it and paying yeah. attention to it. And then life gets busy. Like you go to NAB and you do a, an inc- you a lots of steps <laughs> during that yeah. time. And so you don't feel the need to check it because you know that you're blowing your step count away. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I, I've, I have never become a slave to it, but it's, it's there and it's nice to know. And yeah. sometimes it's a good wake up call that maybe I have been a little too sedentary and need to, to up my game a bit. 
Yeah. So they have the the proactive health monitor that's got and in, and it really is an ultimate workout partner. So you really have good options as far as uh, 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 easy ways to to track everything, uh, whether it be your heart rate, how much you're working out. You want to close your rings. They even have you can set up competitions. You can comp- compete with your friends, being able to see if you 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 got your steps in more than that person does. Um, we, we, I've done that many times, so it's fun. So, uh, but the, that's really I mean what stands out with the watch. Um, the apps themselves, there's a lot of great apps available on the watch that to, that you can utilize. Um, that uh, I, I've always been pretty satisfied with. I mean, listening to a podcast is 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 pretty awesome in itself. Checking your email is very simple. I did a presentation on 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 being efficient by using an Apple watch and see if you could get away with not using uh, your iPhone. Um, so the messages app works really well. The, uh, the email is, is perfectly fine for the most part. If you just need to do some quick responses, have you, have you done a lot of those things with the email and uh, messages? Not as much email, but messages. Absolutely. I mean, I find that to be one of the compelling the uses of the watch is knowing when messages come in, um, and being able to respond to, to them either with an emoji or uh, a voice response. Um, I, that, that's, that particular feature has not the voice response, but just right. the whole messages on my wrist thing has been the, one of the things that sold it for me from day one. No, oh, absolutely. And uh, I, that, that worked really well. Um, I talked about calendar a little bit. It's nice to have your calendar. Just, just a quick way of looking at your calendar right on your watch. Um, the watch faces. I mean, I could, we could probably spend an hour all by itself just going over all the different features of what the watch can do. Um, my favorite watch face is actually the analog, uh, the, 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 the latest one they did with the, the analog hand watch is the infograph. Um, what, what is your favorite? Uh, I, I've got, I'm looking at the infograph right now. Yeah. I, but I've always been one that, you know, the more information I can pack onto that face, the better I like it. Yeah, me too. And, and that's what I've done is and I've got, I've got the workout rings on one corner. I've got Apple stock. I'm always watching Apple stock on the, on the, on the top left. Then I have my my messages on the top right, and then I have the timer, which you probably use quite a bit uh, to time things. So it's on the, the bottom right, and you just tap it, and uh, you could start a timer real quickly. Um, but you could add any app you want that makes uh, that, that that would make your your life easy. Um, it also has a walkie-talkie feature where you actually can talk two-way with people. Have you used the walkie-talkie feature at all? I've, I've experimented with it, but yeah. I haven't. Can't find it. That's a, a regular use thing. Yeah, same here. I played with it. We had fun with it a little bit, and it's like, mm, this wasn't too exciting. Uh, I just remember the days of those old next telephones, and you'd hear it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and that's kind of what it is. Uh, but it, it does come in handy at times if you were to, to, to talk with the walkie-talkie. So, um, and listening to music, of course, is, is, is a great thing. You know, one of the cool thing with the watch too is, I don't know if you've ever used it before, is you actually can use it as a remote control for your Apple, for your iPhone. If you have your iPhone on, on a tripod and you want to be able to uh, trigger it instead of having to set a self timer, um, a nifty way you can be reaching down below you and say, Hey, say cheese. And then you, then you can take the picture. <laughs> oh, it is so much. It, listen, that is so much better than, you know, trying to set the timer and then yeah. run around and, you know, run. <laughs> get, in, get in your spot and pose and smile. You just, you know, reach down and tap it and then you're in your pose and all you have to do is just move your, your hand a little bit and it'll, it'll, you can use the timer there too. So you have a chance to get in the proper position, but yeah, that's absolutely one that I've used on a regular. Yeah. So, uh, and then there's bands. <laughs> How many bands do you own? <laughs> I'm going to disappoint you, David. I own oh. exactly three. Oh, okay. So you're not as bad as me. I should. No. Nope. And, and the, the thing is I've two of them. One of them has never been worn. I just, I bought it because it was a two for one deal. Um, but my everyday band is the same one that I bought with the original Apple watch and that is the black magnetic closure. Okay. Oh, so you've got, Oh, but that wasn't a, uh, uh the magnetic one. The, there was black. There was a black one. There was a, yeah, way back when, when they first came out and it was obscenely priced, but I tell okay. you what, it, it has held up well. It still, still does great. And, um, it's the most comfortable band I wear because if I, if I want to pull it down tight, it'll stay tight. If okay. I want to loosen it up, I can loosen it up. And so I bought, as they came up, actually the other two are third party bands. They're the okay. same closure. Just one is red and one is blue. Well, I'm holding up all the bands I have here. You can see. Oh I'm my carrying. God, David. 
this is how insane, insane I am. There must be about 10 here. <laughs> There's a down payment on a house in that. It really is. There's at least, there. I, I got to have the Nike one. Then I have the black one. And of course I have being me being a Chicago Cubs fan. They, and MLB, of course, has to jump on that bandwagon. Uh, you have the cloth ones. And my my favorite, my two favorites are the the black band is I I just put that on back recently. Then then the uh, the sports rap band where it loops through and it's it's a full loop, similar to the to the uh, the Melanie's uh, band, which I just found. Of course, uh, I had the cheap one, but then when I saw it, Best Buy was selling it for ninety eight dollars, which the original price was one hundred forty nine. I I had to buy the Melanie's, uh, you know silver one so now i have the real one instead of the fake one so <laughs> okay yeah. hey again if that's if it well, makes you happy that's what that's the thing with bands you, you, that's what's cool about it um it uh you can you can get whatever bands you'd like um and the, and, the, and it makes it stylish to however you so, so choose the other tr- thing i didn't really hit about too is, is the size the size of the screen so you go with a 44 millimeter now and a 42 millimeter do you have the 44 i have the 44 yeah, I like the bigger face because I'm a big guy. I want to have a bigger face because I, I look at that smaller face. My wife has the uh, the 42, and uh, it's uh, it's too small. <laughs> well, I, I don't have a particularly big wrist at that particular area, but even so, I still went with the 42 and – 44. Or 44, excuse me. And, uh, you know, after about 12 hours, it's like I didn't even think about it anymore. It's like, okay, this the that screen is so big and beautiful. And as you said, with the infograph – I mean, it's just impossible to beat. It really is. So, so and, and kind of a wrap up here about the about the Apple Watch. Um, of course, there's accessories you could buy too. Um, I got the nightstand um, uh, charger. Do you have a stand? How do you charge your watch? You have a, just the uh, the standard cord or uh, standard cord? I, I believe the one I got was uh, again from way back. Spigen. Uh, okay. He took the original cord and it's a nice little thing that is elevated. And uh, I, I don't know how you charge your watch, but mine goes on the charger every right. morning when I get in the shower and oh, okay. comes off. And that, and that, you know, at a time while I'm in the shower and get pressed, takes my charge back up the whole way and I'm fine for a day and a half to. Okay, um, and uh, I have the uh, I have the magnetic charging dock, uh, of course, uh, but I got that for Christmas, and that sits on my nightstand, and I set it sideways and charges at night, and then I have the have the, the clock right there too. Mm-hmm. So, um, and uh, yeah, like I said, always ways to accessorize uh, the watch. Uh, let me uh, go over a little bit about pricing uh, with the current models, um, and uh, also I'll touch a little bit about the ECG. Um, so the Apple Watch Series 4, I believe, starts at $399, if I'm not mistaken. It does. And that's the basic model. That's the that's the 42-millimeter. Uh, so that's what they start the pricing at. And then you could buy different models um, based on the band, too. So if you decide you want to buy the, uh, the one with the white sports band or the black sports band or the sand, pink sand which of course the girls like that <laughs> mostly and then you have the uh the this the sports loop which is the one i uh, my second favorite band um you have those options and then you move up into the um uh you move up into the 44 millimeter size uh, and that that brings the price up about 30 dollars it brings it to 429 if you have the cellular version of it, it starts at 499 so then you're going all up to over 500 dollars with uh, if you want the 44 millimeter uh, so it can get be a little pricey. So if you're deciding on this on on the Apple Watch Series Four, you really got to decide what's 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 important to you uh, when it comes to that. Uh, the Series Three be much cheaper. Um, you start, I believe, around two. I think it was like two fifty nine. Um, let me pull up the uh, let's see where they have uh, the Series Three here. Uh, got to go onto their page here, but uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, so if you even if you look at the ones that have the uh, it's the stainless steel case, and you have a Hermes uh, um, band. Yeah, you're start, talking about uh, fourteen hundred dollars for a watch. <laughs> I don't know if that 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 would be in your uh, uh, realm of wanting to purchase. Well, but let's let's keep in mind too that a big chunk of that is for the band, so the it's transferable. Right. So yeah, true. Yeah, maybe maybe that'll make you feel a little better. And but but it's got the uh, the stainless steel casing instead of the it's stainless steel and uh what was that the other ones had there 
Well, they're stainless steel too. Yeah, it's just the bands. That's really what you're paying for. Crazy. Charging that kind of money for a for a band, huh? Well, you know, I, that's that's style for you. <laughs> so, um, and I believe the pricing on the on the Apple Watch Series 3 will start around uh, 229 249 And then I guess I'd always shop around and be able to find them the least expensive one at the way around uh, I thought it was one ninety nine. So um and that's it. So which which watch should you buy? Well, like we said, it's really the one that you have to choose that's best for you. I think I think the Apple Watch Series 4 has got a lot of bang for its buck. The biggest thing which I wanted to talk about briefly is the ECG. Now, the ECG is an electronic uh, cardiograph and allows you to be able to touch the, the stem and it actually measures your heart rate. And it actually uh, has uh, it has it in such a way where it measures it and it tells you everything looks good and you don't have AFib, uh, which is, you know, if anybody knows what AFib is, it's your heart skipping a beat. Now, I did an interesting test. I won't say who it was that I did it with, but I put my watch. I put I put a watch on someone else that I that I that I thought I knew had AFib. I wanted to see if it actually works, and it did. It said he yeah, has AFib. I mean, wow. taking medicine for it, and, he's, and 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 they're taking taking care of that. But I saw it firsthand. It does work, um, and it's crazy. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention too is the uh, the fall sensor. Um, Interesting when you put when you put the information in uh, your fo- in, in the fo- in the watch app for the first time, and you say how old are how, how old you are, and if it's anybody that's over the age of sixty five, it and it, 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 it look at that, I already, I already started talking there. Uh, it it, uh, it it automatically uh, um, turns on the fall sensor. So of course someone fell, not realizing that it was turned on, and it warned them. If anybody knows what the fall sensor does, it senses that you've fallen. You know, if you fall into the ground, it, and it senses it by you know, by force, of seeing how much uh, the actual shake happened. So when they hit the ground, they say, "Are you are you okay?" And, it, and and like like you just heard my watch talk to me, it it tells you that are uh, you okay? Do we, do I need to call nine one one? And if you don't respond to the watch at a period of time, it's going to call nine one one automatically. So it's it is ha- it has happened to many a few people. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard or anything uh, relates to that. Not specifically. I, I mean, I know that you know there there have been stories reported about those kind of things, but no, not no personal experience happily. Yeah. So, um, but uh, t- check it out, and uh, we'll and and, and uh, I'll have links in the show notes about uh, what uh, about what the Apple Watch, where to go, and uh, and I hope that that this this kind of gave you a good comprehensive uh, uh, understanding of what uh, what there is all is about the Apple Watch. And you notice that we don't talk a lot about the Apple Watch. We always talk more so about the iPad or the iPhone. Um, so it's good to kind of give you a little bit of a review so people have some um, ways of understanding the best way to to, uh, uh, to to make a wise choice when it comes to the Apple Watch. So well, You forget that there are so many options, David. You, I think you did a great job of sort of reviewing all the options and all the considerations. Because, uh, sure, you can just pop out to an Apple store or any other store and buy an Apple Watch. But if you really want to think about all the things and all yeah. the options that you can do with it, you gotta, you gotta do just a little research, and both of us will, will definitely recommend the Apple Watch Series Four. So there's, you got recommended, and I assume you recommend it as well. <laughs> oh yeah, no question. No yeah, question. I, think, I think it was. I was very. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I purchased it. So I'm very happy with it. So, um, with that, uh, you know, we we ran a little long here, so I had a couple tips on here, but I'm gonna probably save those for next week because I wanted to talk a little bit about Mac stock. Now, you and I both are speaking now for a fifth year, which I'm very excited about. I, I assume you are. I am. I'm absolutely looking forward to it as I have since uh, day one. Yeah, me as well. So, uh, briefly, what I'll, what I'll say is. Uh, uh, we have links in the show notes to how to get to Mac stock. I don't talk too much about it because I have talked a lot about it, but, but I want to tell people it's a great, it's a great conference, a great show. I want you to, uh, to, to come out to Mac stock this year. It's July 27th and 28th in Woodstock, Illinois, which is just outside of Chicago where I'm located. And uh, a lot of people are traveling from all over the world to come see it. Uh, and we've got a lot of great speakers, including myself and Chuck and uh Allison Sheridan and uh, David Sparks from the Mac Power Users Podcast is going to be there, and he's also going to do his recorded 500th episode. Guy Searle, who was just on the show, uh, they're going to be on the doc- doing the my, my Mac uh, com podcast and uh, talking about the, doing the quiz show like they did last time. A lot of fun. Barry's uh, the the Mac Mingle will have a lot of fun there during the Saturday night sessions, and it's a two f- two full days conference 
and it's such a bargain. But the early birds pricing is going to be going away very soon here at, at the end of April. Right now, it's at $179 uh, for two days. I mean, you think about that. That's just, just a bargain compared to a lot of the shows that you go out to to see. Um, but if you use my offer code, which is in touch, you'll get you'll save ten dollars off of that uh, off of that price, and uh, you'll be able to come out and see us for the ten dollars less than what, what the early bird pricing is. Again, go to maxstock2019.com, uh, check it out, and we would love to have you. And uh, and it would be a, a, another great way to being able to meet up with a lot of people and, uh, and network. And once you agree, the networking part is just the best of the MaxDoc. Every everything about MaxDoc, David, is is spectacular. The uh, and the price for what you get is is genuinely amazing. I don't know how Mike does it. I don't um, either. But you get great speakers. You get a lot of fun people. Um, you have uh, a couple great lunches. Yep. Um, you have Barry's uh, Midwest Mac Mingle. I mean, you know, it's, we can just go fun. right. Yeah, you can go right down the list. But okay. you will have you'll be hard pressed to find a more fun weekend if you're an Apple Tech person than Mac Stock. Period. It's cozy, it's cozy fun. Come on, see us. Uh, MacStock 2019com The link will be in the show notes. And uh, like I said, use my offer code in touch at the checkout. Ten dollars off your early bird price. With that, let's kind of wrap things up. Uh, Chuck, how do people find you and what, what have you been doing these days on, uh, on your show? Well, we started out by talking about NAB. If you go over to macvoices.com, I'm still, um, after this show, I'll be editing and releasing more um, interviews that I did um, at, the, at the show, on the show floor, and at the Faster Together event, um, talking about just about anything that struck me as interesting. And certainly there's a lot of iOS stuff in there. There's a lot yes. of Mac stuff in there and there's some just general interest things as well. So a lot of great stuff over and, and uh, check it out. Check out his show. He'll be doing, he's been just started the road to Mac stock and you'll uh, get to hear some interviews and uh, including myself and all the rest of the speakers. So make sure you're checking that out as well. He had some great videos on CES and just check it out. Mac stock, macvoices.com it's a great place that they, you you're telling everybody that and i have to repeat it here so uh but uh yeah please check him out and a lot of great stuff and i uh, and i really appreciate you being here um let's uh let's uh, just wrap this up here and then that's a wrap for this week uh, please send in your your comments questions and suggestions to our email address feedback at in touch with ios.com you can follow us on twitter at in touch with ios you can also subscribe in your favorite podcatcher including apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, stitcher radio spotify and TuneIn radio or better yet go to our website at in touch with ios.com where all the links to listen are there at the top of the page i'm dave ginsburg and you can find me on twitter at dave g65 and again chuck thanks for joining me this week Thank you, David. This is fun. Hope we do it again. A lot of fun. We're definitely going to do it again. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.